Season 2 has some of the most broken abilities we've ever seen in Arena. We're talking about Enhancement Shamans one-shotting your whole team, or Demon Hunters feeling more like an Overwatch hero than an actual class in World of Warcraft. Seriously though, did everyone suddenly get an ultimate? What sort of waggy tobacco are they smoking over there at Blizzard Entertainment? Anyway, we're here to break things down with 10 of the most broken abilities in Season 2, including tips on how to counter them. Starting off our list is Power Infusion, which is arguably the most game-breaking ability in all of WoW. On its surface, PI doesn't seem that important. 25% haste for 20 seconds? Who cares when there are clearly more broken abilities like Avenging Wrath, right? Well, not so fast. For one, you probably know this by now, but when priests use Power Infusion on other players, the priest will also get the same PI buff. The reason why this matters is because haste is arguably the most broken stat in WoW. First of all, there are multiple abilities in the game that get their cooldown reduced by haste, including Power Ward Shield for the Disc Priest. DPS rotational abilities can also get reduced. Take Enhancement Shamans, for instance. Higher haste levels reduce the cooldown on Storm Strike, which means more resource generation and a higher chance to proc Ascendance. And while all this is happening, Wind Fury is going off like a machine gun. On top of this, more haste means more dot ticks, which can lead to some janky damage. Last season, there were tons of Twitch clips with Devastation Evokers one-shotting people with PI, since the increased haste gave them more burst on Fire Breath, which gets its damage calculated by the amount of theoretical dot DPS it is able to deal. Clearly, PI is busted, so what can you do? For one, you should treat PI like you would any other major offensive cooldown. The damage spikes it can provide have a multiplying effect on other major offensives, which means you should be ready to trade a defensive cooldown quickly if multiple offensives are stacked. Fortunately, Power Infusion is one of the few offensive cooldowns that can actually be dispelled, and it is super high on the priority list of dispels in WoW PvP. You should prioritize dispelling PI on any DPS target. Even though it helps the Disc or Holy Priest too, they are way less threatening than any DPS target with Power Infusion active. PI isn't the only busted priest ability you have to care about this season. Patch 10.1 introduced Phase Shift as an optional PvP talent, which causes Fade to provide immunity to all spells for one second, giving priests a new form of CC immunity and, more importantly, a popular Twitch Clips generator. This, of course, is an homage to the old Greater Fade from Shadowlands, which totally brings back good memories. Anyway, with the addition of Phase Shift, Fade has quickly become one of the most efficient cooldowns in the game, offering damage reduction, a root breaker, and now a complete immunity all in one convenient button. For any setup-based CC class like mages, hunters, and rogues, this now means one additional spell to play around aside from the usual Shadow Word death. Plan to have your casted CC occasionally immune and be ready to recast your spells once the one second immunity ends. You can potentially even juke out the phase shift preemptively by moving towards the priest, pretending like you are going to stun or use any other form of CC in order to bait out the immunity. We would even suggest tracking fade once again with an add-on like Omnibar so you know when your spells can possibly miss, assuming the priest is playing with phase shift. By the way, being able to outplay your opponents is one of our main goals at SkillCap.com. It's no secret that WoW PvP is a game of knowledge. The more you know about each class, the easier it is to climb. That's why we developed three brand new courses that are designed to elevate your game knowledge. Our Knowing Your Enemy guides teach you the tricks on how to counter the most oppressive classes in the meta. This season, we're also rolling out new micro-commentaries for every spec, which teach you how to implement rank 1 level mechanics into your own gameplay. The best part? Everything at SkillCap is risk-free to try, because we offer a rating and guarantee while actively using our website. Click the link below to get started and get the rating you've always wanted. Anyway, back to the video. Next up, we have an ability you might not know about. Cloak of Shadows. We're kidding, of course. What we mean is the new and improved Cloak of Shadows, which can now be used to remove physical debuffs and give 100% dodge chance thanks to the reworked Veil of Midnight PvP talent. The physical debuff removal is absolutely broken, since it means being able to remove things like disarms and big bleeds like thunderous roar, or even major debuffs like deathmark. Who would have guessed that the biggest counter to rogues were rogues themselves? Anyway, now that rogues have a giga evasion with Cloak of Shadows, it's something you need to actively play around as a melee DPS. In the past, it was possible to tunnel rogues as a melee, only needing to worry about evasion and vanish, but now you should be more careful, making sure to track the cooldown on cloak, and ideally looking to set up burst with stuns if your win condition involves any major physical debuff. And on the defensive end, now that rogues can remove disarms with cloak, you need to be extra mindful of this when peeling, recognizing that your party might not be safe if the disarmed rogue has cloak ready. 
Next up, we have everyone's favorite spec of all time, Balance Druid. Unless you've been in a coma since the start of Season 1, Boomkins are everywhere these days, lurking in every bracket. Their quick rise to fame was due to a few reasons. For one, with the change to CC durations and the removal of the Gladiator's distinction bonus, Cyclone now lasts 6 seconds, which is longer than its previous duration of 5.1 from last season. And it just so happens that Boomkins have the best Cyclones in the game, with increased range and shorter cast times thanks to Owlkin Frenzy procs. When this is combined with one of the best offensive cooldowns in the game with Incarnation, you have one of the deadliest specs for Season 2. Playing around Cyclone is tricky since Alkin Frenzy makes the cast super fast, sometimes under half a second depending on haste values, while it might be tempting to kick these fast clones. Better Boomkins will juke with the fast cast in order to proc Precognition, which will make subsequent casts harder to interrupt while also buffing their damage. Because of this, you need to download some data on your opponents. Are they juking their clones a lot? If the answer is yes, then try not to get baited with the fast cast versions. As far as when to interrupt Cyclone, prioritize moments where your healer is stuck in a root beam and the boomkin is pushing towards them to follow up with a clone to extend the CC chain. But again, be sure to check if Alkin Frenzy is up first to know how to time your kicks. Continuing our trend of meta disruptors, we have Enhancement Shamans, who as we saw earlier have some of the craziest bursts in Season 2. This is caused by a few different cooldowns being used all at once, with the main culprit being Ascendance, which is sometimes used as an ability on its own or can activate as a proc depending on the Shaman's build. Then the Shaman will typically combine Bloodlust with Doom Winds, while also potentially getting Power Infusion from a Priest to add to the cooldown stack. If you're a class with the Disarm effect, you're in luck since the majority of Shaman damage during these cooldowns can be stopped with a quick Disarm. Once you see Doom Winds, you should Disarm no matter what since its duration is only 8 seconds. If you don't have a Disarm, you'll probably need to trade a Major Defensive no matter what the moment you see Doom Winds get stacked with Lust or Ascendance. There's really no reason not to trade when all these are stacked since the damage is disproportionately high. As a final note, you can't rely on kiting the Enhancement Shaman while Ascendance is active, since their Storm Strike will have a 30 yard range, so just keep that in mind when you plan to use any mobility cooldowns such as teleports. Of course, we couldn't make a Broken Abilities video without mentioning Rogues and Mages. Sub Rogues are shaping up to be quite strong again this season after nerfs to both Arms Warriors and Ret Paladins, which obviously means being ready to trade cooldowns into Shadow Dance, right? Maybe if this was 2012, but no, rogues have some new secret techniques. Literally, their scary damage these days comes from an ability called Secret Technique, which is an ability that will hit multiple times. And when it is used with cold blood, every portion of the ability will crit, which can lead to a huge amount of burst. We highly recommend tracking cold blood using something like Omnibar or Weak Auras, since this is the main win condition you need to worry about. Generally, the rogue will pair both of these abilities together every minute, typically with Shadow Dance, which has a variable cooldown depending on the rogue's build. This is why you generally don't want to trade into Shadow Dance alone, since the scary damage comes from Cold Blood and Secret Technique together. Lately, you may have seen some clips of people dying to ignite, which is not even an ability the mage actually presses. It's actually just the passive mastery for fire mages, which adds a dot effect onto damaging attacks. The reason this ability is suddenly doing so much damage is due to the glass cannon PvP talent, which was changed in patch 10.1 to increase ignite damage by 100%. This has caused some fire mages to drop haste in favor of mastery, while picking up talents on the tree that also affect mastery, leading to a massive mess of damage modifiers. Luckily, some of the insane damage fire mages were dealing was caused by a bug which was eventually hotfixed, but Ignite is still catching many players off guard. The main culprit is Combustion, which unfortunately is no longer dispellable in Dragonflight. Ignite, on the other hand, can be dispelled, which is still not very reliable since the debuff can be instantly reapplied with another Pyroblast. In any case, with the damage of Ignite being so big during Combustion, trading a major defensive while Bust is active is still the move. Come on now, you should remember this from Shadowlands. Fire Mages aren't alone with their one-shot abilities because Frost has one of its own. Of course, Icy Veins is their main damage cooldown, and when combined with Slick Ice means every Frost Bolt will hit harder and harder, up to an additional 20%. Most people know this by now, but in 10.1, Icy Veins damage is slightly more scary. This is because Frost Bolt will deal more damage after a 4% buff, which might not seem like much until you consider the multiplying effect this has with Slick Ice. In any case, just like before, you should prioritize interrupting the Mage on Frost when Icy Veins is active. If they are allowed to chain cast Frost Bolt over and over, the damage will become nearly unhealable. 
Rhett Paladins have a similar mechanic with Crusade, which can be selected in place of the 1 minute Avenging Wrath. Crusade is on a 2 minute cooldown, which will cause the Paladins damage to ramp up over time, eventually giving them a huge increase to haste, which we already know is massively OP. Normally when you see Avenging Wrath, you are programmed to press cooldowns immediately to avoid getting instantly blasted with damage, but since Crusade is a stacking buff, you will get more value by pressing any damage reduction CDs slightly later to offset the bigger spikes and burst, ideally pressing your defensive right before the Paladin reaches 10 stacks. This even changes how you should use disarm effects into Rhett Paladins. Again, instead of instantly disarming Crusade, you will get way more value by pressing slightly later when the damage is most threatening. Next up, we have a spell you are likely to see in Arena, especially since Mistweaver monks are quite popular. It's called Zen Spheres, which is two abilities in one. When used on a friendly player, it will increase all healing done to them by the monk, but when used on an enemy player, it will increase their damage taken by 10%. Again, 10% might not seem like much on paper, but consider the multiplying effect it can have when major offensives are popped. And bear in mind, it is all damage taken from all sources. Fortunately, both effects can be removed. The healing increase is called Sphere of Hope and can be purged by using any offensive dispel. Sphere of Despair is the offensive variation of the ability and can be removed by healers, which is often worth the global if there is nothing else worth dispelling. Before we wrap things up, we have a bonus ability, which isn't necessarily broken, but is definitely worth knowing about. Interlope is a PvP talent you're less likely to encounter in Arena, but is quite broken in RBGs. It allows hunters to redirect spells to their pet by using misdirection. In 10.1, this was buffed to redirect three total spells up from one. This mechanic allows hunters to ninja cap bases against caster defenders, who might be confused as to why their spells aren't stopping the hunter from capping, because instead they are hitting the pet. Now again, this isn't something that you're likely to encounter too frequently in Arena, but it's definitely played in very specific matchups, especially into Double Wizard. So if you're a caster facing off against a hunter, watch for the misdirect buff on enemy players, especially before committing any major burst or CC. If you want to learn more tips on how to outplay the competition this season, be sure to check out skillcap.com. We have three brand new courses that are designed to make you a better player in Season 2. Becoming a member today will also allow you to talk directly to Rank 1 players in our Ask a Pro forum, where you can get personalized help with all your PvP-related questions. We're the only service that guarantees you will gain at least 400 rating while actively using our website. So what are you waiting for? Get the rating you've always wanted by clicking the discount link below. Alright guys, that wraps it up for this one. Let us know in the comments below what abilities you think are the most broken in Season 2. As always though, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.